Good morning and welcome into worship. My name is Pastor Lee. It is such a such a blessing to be with you this morning. Um, we're going to try something a little different this morning as far as announcements go. Um, all the announcements you need um, that I could possibly think of, they're in the comment box. Um, read through those <laughs> at your leisure. Um, but you'll see any information you need um, about our in-person events, um, our COVID update, our offering, all of that's in the comment box. So please go take a look there um, for all of that. And so, um, so let us jump right into worship. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Would you join me in the call to worship? Hope is poured upon us this day. God is with us, always offering God's healing love. Now is the time for us to be people of action, not just those who sit silently and hear the good news. Now is the time to seek the good, to heal those who are broken, to offer peace and hope. Thanks be to God who has blessed us with God's abundant gifts. We are called to use these gifts in service to God's broken world. Let us rejoice in the mission to which God has directed us. Amen. in prayer. God of mercy and love, be with us this morning as we hear the stories of Jesus and his compassion. Remind us again that we are also need to be people of hope and compassion in this world which seems so dark. You, O oh God, open the doors of blessings. You reveal to us the many ways in which Jesus reached out to others at their time of need. 
Inspire our hearts and lift our spirits this day. We offer, for we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me in that prayer that Jesus Christ taught us so long ago? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. today is Mark chapter 1 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they had told him about her at once. They came in and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever fell, left her and she began to serve him. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went through Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Last week we spent some time in the synagogue, uh, but this week we're going to spend some quality time um, in a place I think many of us are becoming well acquainted with and uh, probably a little frustrated with. Today our gospel story takes us home. It takes us into a household. 
where last week's story may have felt foreign, um, or at least foreign recently, seeing as we haven't been to church since the beginning of last November. This story, I think, takes on a whole new dimension with how much time we're spending in the home with this quarantine. Have you ever noticed how much of the ministry of Jesus takes place in people's homes? And it's not really just Jesus. I mean, it's the entire early church. How much of that ministry took place in the home? He is at a home when he turns the water into wine, his first miracle. He raises Jairus' daughter from the dead in their home. Jesus wasn't satisfied having a salvific and edifying conversation with Zacchaeus on the road or even up in the tree. No, he wanted to be in his home. He teaches Mary and Martha about faith. In the home. The disciples, as they walk down the road to Emmaus, they don't grasp who is with them until they're seated around the table at home. The early church meets in people's homes. And today we have Jesus fresh off his interactions with demons, demons retreating to the home of Simon Peter. And it is there that Jesus does some of his best work. It is in the home, around dinner tables, in the living room, and today at the bedside that Jesus does some of his best work. And you may be thinking, so what? So what? Jesus goes into people's homes. That's normal. That's everyday stuff. You and I are stuck in the home. What's so special? There's nothing special about being home. And that's exactly right. There's nothing special about being in your house. It's mundane. It's ordinary. It's familiar. And I bet right now it's feeling like the complete opposite of being in church. This moment, this church moment that we're in right now, this worshipful moment feels completely different than being in the church. The home is all of these things, ordinary, mundane. And yet it's the place where the kingdom emanates from. It is a place where the kingdom spreads from. It spreads from this home, this ordinary, mundane place. Jesus walks there, walks in. And there, someone grasps. In the home, it is where someone grasps what it means to be a follower of Jesus. The home, when Jesus steps in, becomes a sacred site in which, in which disciples are made in the kingdom is created. This particular home is Simon Peter's mother-in-law's home. Jesus leaves the sacred, the synagogue, and enters the mundane, the home. We find out that Simon Peter's mother-in-law is sick with a fever. In years past, the thought of getting a fever wasn't that big of a deal. At least not for me, for the most part. For the average person, It wasn't that big of a deal. There, of course, are situations where a fever um, is a terrible thing. Um, but for most people, the thought of giving a f- getting a fever, well, not uh, something we want, um, doesn't make for a perfect day. But, you know, you, you get some rest, you take some medicine, you drink some water, and, and in a couple of days, you're probably just fine. But again, I I think in this time and place, um, the idea of somebody getting a fever has, has changed for us. It has become a little bit closer to what Simon Peter's mother-in-law's fever would have been like. 
And I say that only because now we are constantly faced with the question. And I would, I would say the fear of getting a fever. Because to get a fever now means so much more. Every week when Rachel and I walk into the clinic, we are asked, do you have a fever? A question that never was asked before. But it's always on our brain. So maybe a fever doesn't spell death, but I, I think during this time we approach a little bit closer to that reality that Simon's mother-in-law was living. When a fever wasn't just a little medicine in some water, but a sign of death. Simon's mother-in-law is dying when Jesus leaves the sacred and enters the mundane. And Jesus leaves the sacred, enters the mundane, sits at her bedside, and raises her up, brings her back to life. He resurrects her, and she begins to serve. She begins to serve. And I don't want us to get wrapped up in the gender stereotypes of, of all of this. Um, I don't want us to linger on why the males didn't get up and do the housework themselves. There's a time and place, and there's even stories in which um, we need to call out the, the sexism um, and the damage done by the Bible to, to women. Um, but I don't think this is one of those stories. Because I think to focus on that, to focus on her doing housework, would take away from what she's actually doing, would in fact minimize her impact. Because when I see Simon Peter's mother-in-law doing, it's not falling back into women's work, the cleaning and the cooking. It's not taking a back seat to the men. No, because the word Mark uses here to describe what she does when she's resurrected it's the same word the gospel writers use to describe the actions of the angels after Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness. It says the angels served him. It's the same way Jesus will describe his own ministry, his entire ministry. He will use the same word. Jesus said, I came not to be served but to serve. It's the same word. It's a word that is used to describe the women who stuck around as Jesus was hanging on the cross. It says, there stood the, woman, the women who served. It's the same word that the early church would come to use when it would be commissioning deacons. It's the same vocation that all clergy are called into, a life of servant leadership. You see, when it says the mother got up to serve, it wasn't Mark sliding her back into her proper place as a woman. No, it was saying service. This same service that is used to describe the ministry of Jesus. The very act of serving people is the proper place. For all disciples, for all Christians. I think too often we think about salvation as being saved from something, saved from our sins, saved from hell, saved from our desire to lie, steal, or cheat, saved from our addictions, saved from our selfish desires. And I could go on and on. But I bet you have a pretty good idea of what you've been saved from, or at the very least, what you need to be saved from. But as Jesus moves from the sacred to the mundane, as he moves from the synagogue to the home, I think he also moves us from a plane of salvation as being saved from something to salvation saving us for something. 
In the synagogue, we praise God for all that we have been saved from. We are reminded that we are saved from these things. But see, being saved from all those things, I think, finds its true value once we leave the building and enter the mundane. It is in our homes that we see what we are saved for. It's the now what question. You are saved from all those things. Now what? I'm saved from my sins. Now what do I do? What can I do? What should I do? In our story here today about Simon Peter's mother-in-law says she was saved from her fever so she could do what? Serve. We join in in building the kingdom of heaven. Jesus doesn't heal and save us for the sake of saving us. No, he heals and saves us for something. And again, that something is to serve. That's true discipleship. Simon Peter's mother-in-law is the first person in Mark's gospel to truly grasp what it means to follow Jesus. Well, the 12 disciples will continue to fail to grasp what true discipleship is. It is the mother-in-law. It is the woman at the cross who gather and know that we are saved for service. And all of this happens in the home, in an ordinary place, in the mundane of life, in the normal, everyday, run-of-the-mill occurrences. Maybe this week the message is as simple as what would it look like to make our homes the place where the kingdom is spread? What would it look like if it was in our homes that we encounter Christ and grab hold of our calling to service? You see, this isn't a call to do more. This isn't some guilt trip. I'm not going to now ask you all to join committees or to, or to join me in a mission event. Rather, I think it's a reminder that so much good happens in the home. So much good can happen when we look for Jesus in the mundane, when we expect to find Jesus in the ordinary places of our lives. So much of the kingdom work is done not in the sacred synagogue, not in the church, but in the home, in the world. I said it earlier, Jesus does his best work in the home. What would it look like for us to do our best work in the home? What would it look like for the kingdom to go forward from our houses? Home. It's ordinary. It's mundane. It's familiar. And yet Jesus often left the synagogue in preference of the home is where the Son of God wanted to do his best work. So right now we're spending a lot of time at home. We're spending so much time in the ordinary. So why not let it be a place in which the kingdom can be spread from? Why not let our homes be the place where God's kingdom springs forth into the world? Why not let it be the place where we meet Jesus and move from the mindset of being saved from to being saved for service? People, Christ is looking to come into our homes and show us what discipleship looks like, to show us what it means to be a follower. Most of, the tra- most of the most transformation in people's lives happened in the home. 
Let us live by Christ's example and make the kingdom of heaven spring forth from our homes today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us uh, this morning. Again, if you uh, are looking for our announcements, uh, they're in the comment section. Go look at them. They're there. Um, anything you could want or need to know is right there in the comment section. Um, so I hope to see you at some of these on um, in-person events we got coming up. And so um, with that, let us go with this benediction. Go into the world, into the ordinary world, knowing that Christ will be there, offering transformation. Let us live into the promise that Christ will make the mundane holy. Go with the peace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.